right there. Hello everyone, I'm Alfredo Moralejo from Video <coughs> Project. I've been working at Reza the last around almost 10 years and I've spent my last four creating OpenStack packages at RDO. And it's Javier also from RDO Project. He's working more in the infrastructure part and working more in the release management part. So, uh, well, we have a split presentation in two different parts. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is what we are trying to talk about today. Okay. We are the goal for today is to try to share with all the interested people what we have done in the last year or so, what we plan to do in in next months and the problems we have been facing during during this time. Okay. Also we will briefly describe how to contribute to RDO for those that may be interested in participating in the pro in the project in somehow, whether as users, contributors, whatever you may be interested. Okay. So So let's start talking about RDO Infra. Sorry, Infra RDO Distro, what we have been doing in the last year. So my manager used to tell me that we need to celebrate success. So this is what I'm going to start doing. What have been what have been achieved in the last year, what have been doing good. So as you probably who I understand that most people here is aware of OpenStack, what OpenStack is and more or less the basic. You know that OpenStack project is releasing a major version every six months. So in this year we have been re we have done two major releases. First one was RDO Stain in around April. In October we did RDO Train also, both on CentOS 7. And RDO we tried to provide packages for upstream releases as soon as possible after they are tagged upstream. Usually it, it, it means about days, in some cases, for example, for to it took us a, a little bit more, especially because of this. This, one, this was one of the big things we did in the last year, also to move by default to use Ceph Nautilus, last version on as default in, in OpenStack. You probably know that uh, there is a very close relationship between OpenStack and some other projects, for example, Ceph in this case. So we try to move ahead to move to move new releases to also to synchronize with new releases of Ceph. That's this year we moved to, to Nautilus well, in, since since Stain, which has been a good achievement. Also, we have worked a lot on getting ready for CentOS 8. For us, CentOS 8 is the very big thing in the last year, or probably in the next month. It's a big, a big step ahead for us. It, there is a lot of changes needed for that, especially because all the Python changes. OpenStack is a very Python-focused project, and we are moving from Python 2 to Python 3, which is really a big change. And also, as part of this preparation for CentOS 8, one thing we have been investing in quite a lot of time is working with the virtualization SIG that is working with containers to move, to, not to move, but to support both Podman and Docker container machines while working in CentOS 7. Okay, as probably you know already, CentOS 8 is only using Podman. So in CentOS 7 we wanted to support both so we can do a smooth transition between, between CentOS 7 and 8. So yeah, we will have to work quite hard with triple O guys and with Podman maintainers to get that working. And finally, as, as a cloud seed, we are also very involved also in Fedora project as OpenStack seed. We are in charge of maintaining some uh, OpenStack packages also in Fedora, which is OpenStack clients only. We don't support running OpenStack services themselves in Fedora, but we support to use the, the clients. In the past, we used to building packages for Fedora used to be a very manual, uh, quite tedious work, to be honest. And we have been working to, to make it much easier for us uh, to be able to deliver updates on OpenStack Live much easier. And this is 
about numbers, I'd like to share for you to have more or less an idea of the size of the project. So in RDO we have we categorize the packages in two different sets. One is OpenStack packages themselves, which are repositories maintained as part of OpenStack project. And the other one is about dependencies, which are uh, Python libraries, but not only Python, but any package that is required to run OpenStack. At RDO we have around 500 of dependencies right now, and about 350, uh, 330 OpenStack packages, depending on the version, has slightly different, but that's more or less the size we are talking about. Which means quite a lot of commits and line changes over the year. We have quite proud of having, well, we are not a huge community, but in the last year we have been contribution for 65 people doing changes in our digits and CI and CI repos, which is, uh, well, I, I would say, a good number of it, and almost 1,000 commits. And in terms of builds, how many builds we did, we have more than 1,500 builds in CBS, which is signed official packages, and well, much more in RD trunk. For those that are not aware, I think it's good here to explain a, bit, a little bit of difference between CBS and RDO trunk. So at RDO we have a very different uh, set of very different, a very wide range of users. One of them is operators running OpenStack Cloud who needs quite a stable staff and they want to be able to run it smoothly and with no much issues and in a secure way if they can they want to check integrity of the packages and so on. But we also have developers, users that want to have very updated packages. I mean, they, they don't want to have just that packages which were released two weeks ago. They want to have the real last commit they, they got to merge in the upstream project. So we have some, uh, some repositories, which we call RDO trunk, which are repositories for packages coming from last commit of every single open stack package. Okay? Those are unsigned packages. We don't usually recommend for open for operators, okay? We usually operators tend to, to work with with sign and official repos, but especially developers, CI and so on are using RDO run. Okay? We have a special tool, Javier will probably talk a bit later about DeLorean, which is our tool to do those very fast moving builds. Okay? And also an important number for us, which is how many packages failed to build, which have about 400 failures this year that we have to somehow manage and get fixed. About CentOS 8, which is for us the very big point, I think for most of the six, moving to CentOS 8 is the very big point here. So, what was the plan? We started working to move to CentOS 8 more than one year ago. So the first thing was how to start working for CentOS 8 when there is no such thing. And uh, our idea was to use Fedora as testbed for, for getting ready for, for, for CentOS. Okay? We create some repositories, kind of frozen repositories for Fedora. And so we could start working to create Python 3 packages, which was the first, the first goal was to make sure that uh, OpenStack could work with Python 3. So we created those Fedora repositories and that allowed us to create specs or to create dual Python packages. So we could, if we use those specs to, to create packages for CentOS 7, we got Python 2 running on Fedora with Python 3 and we could start checking that, okay, we can build those packages and also we can run with an integration part with those Python 3. So we can start running OpenStack on Fedora with Python 3. This was quite useful to, to test that, okay, to catch some issues with Python 3 and check some basic sanity on this will work, okay? So then we started what to do with releases and CentOS and CentOS version, okay, because we need to have to do some roadmap about what are we going to provide on each version of CentOS. So first decision was that Train was going to be the last version of CentOS 7, okay, there will be no Usuri, which is the current one on CentOS 7. Usuri will be the first CentOS only that will come in, in May, okay, so in May you should expect 
if everything goes as we expect, you can expect a version of RDO on CentOS 8. Sign an unofficial CentOS reports, mirrors, and so on. And then we have, we have, and we still have some doubts about what to do with Train on CentOS 8. If there is really a space for it, if we want to, to spend time. So the, the first decision was to provide a RDO, RDO uh, trunk repository for, for CentOS 8 and Train. This fast moving on each commit, okay, because that's mainly for developers who need to start working to make upstream projects to work with CentOS 8. So they use RDO trunk, so they, we decided to provide both for master for Shuri and for, for Train. And we are still considering what to do with, with Train and Cloud Seed and sign packages, official packages for Train. Uh, mainly it will depend on the demand from users. If we really see demand for, um, from users requesting and asking for RDO Train, it's not our focus. Or fo our focus is Shuri on CentOS 8. But we think that the, the movement or the migration to CentOS 8 is going well. We are quite confident and we may be able to provide a, a train if there is demand for it. Okay? So Easy migration, train to train. You have train yeah. on C7, you add nodes with train on C8, and you just migrate train to train. So yeah. we don't have to worry that exactly. something so, could change between the yeah, Exactly. So one of the goals, I understand it can be helpful to to do one change at a time, okay? Instead of doing two times together, so moving to a different major version of, of OpenStack and CentOS, providing can make it easier to just migrate just to CentOS 8, so yeah. The same plan has tri triple O's that have the same plan from what I remember, and at Cola we also plan yeah. to have train for C7 and C8. In Usuri? No, sorry, in train? Yeah. After okay. we get Usuri yeah. on C8, we want to backport stuff to train and get train on C8. I would say that the focus on, of, of I don't want to, to yeah. talk in the name of Triple O, but the priority for them is a master Usuri right now. I think they, they are open also to move to, to train. Okay. But everyone, uh, waits. Triple o. <laughs> <laughs> everyone waits for C8. Yeah. C8. For example, in our case, well, I, I have a slide about that, but we are supporting, for example, also uh, Packstack, and we want to support Packstack in train also, and I would expect that <coughs> it's, it's a little bit a matter of, the problem is, not the problem, the challenge for Triple O is that we need to invest quite much time in preparing for CI and all that, so they are a bit later than us, so they probably, their time is a lot to move to, to okay. CentOS will be, with me, help more, but yeah. And about modules, one of the questions that came up every time we talk about CentOS 8 is what about modules? Are you providing modules? Will you provide? We thought about it, how it will, and we said no. Okay, so we are really comfortable with in the current model to provide different releases, a separate, separate uh, repositories in CentOS for each one of the release, and we think it's working fine. I understand the value of modules, I think it's they are very fine for some use cases, but I think the value it would provide for us for the effort we need to, to do it, I think it's not worth it, and we will keep the current model to deliver repos um, and packages in, in CentOS 8. Okay? Okay, and the challenges we have for CentOS 8, okay, because this is not, has not been, or it's not been an easy thing. So, first thing I mentioned is about this using Fedora as testbed to get ready for CentOS 8 before having any access to CentOS 8. This worked quite well for something, especially for packaging itself to create packages, but the problem we have is that very soon Fedora start differ, uh, diverging from CentOS and at some point the reusability of the test and the work we do for Fedora is not really uh, very high. I mean, we cannot reuse many things from integration side from Fedora to, to CentOS 8. So, yeah, it was good, but at the same time, when we try to move from Fedora to CentOS, there is there's still a lot of work to do. Okay? Timing issues. Uh, you know, CentOS 7 used to be Python 2 only until 7.7, .7, which introduced 
a little bit limited, but introduce support for Python 3. Python 2 is being removed, support for Python 2 is being removed upstream. So we, need, uh, we have a strong push from upstream to move to CentOS 8, okay, or to move to Python 3, let's say. Okay, we didn't want to do the, all the work to start going to first CentOS 7, 7, Python 3, and just two months later go to CentOS 8. So we have, in one side, a lot of push from upstream to move to, to Python 3, but in the CentOS side, we still have a lot of limitations about have, not having proper uh, CVS or proper uh, the, the ability to create CentOS packages. So, I can tell you that every week that our build routes for CentOS 8 was delayed, it was really a pain for us. Missing VRs, for, for the ones that follow CentOS Devil List, probably you are aware of this, uh, the lack of devil, development packages in, in repositories, which is something inherited from RHEL. This has been a problem, not only for, for specific for RDO, for Glossy, but for every single SIG building packages on top. Something that is not fully resolved yet, and we are still working on with CentOS. Also, relationship with other SIGs, RDO or, or Glossy depends on other SIGs for, for virtualization, for example, packages, KVM and so on. For self packages, for ops tools, uh, so we need to do some synchronization. There is dependencies between them, so we need to sync with other six to move ahead together. Okay, so to avoid one of us, let's say, blocking the other, and coordination with the, with upstream, we need to work with Cola, with with DevStack, with Packstack, with Triplelog to make all those projects support CentOS 8. Okay, and where we are, given that the, the current status. So, uh, as I told you before, there, was, there has been a, a, lot of, a lot of pressure on getting ready while we couldn't start building on CentOS 8. So the first thing we did is to create some Fedora copper for those that don't know what Fedora copper is. It's like a light way of, a light uh, build route or way to create packages for CentOS inside from Fedora instead of the official. Those are not official packages for the CentOS, but okay, we can build something and have it, have it available for, for others. So we create all the more than 500 dependencies in the Fedora copper that are, are, is what we have been using to create the RTO trunk repositories for master and train. Those are already available. You can start already playing and uh, using uh, RDO train on CentOS, uh, on CentOS and RDO master on CentOS from the from our trunk repo, but we are already using it to to run CI jobs. We have already bought in jobs in several projects, Puppet, in Packstack. We have been using those packages also to ask for for DevStack, which is a work in progress. Also in Cola, we have using some of those packages. So yeah, we have we have been able to move ahead and to unblock things in uh, with those repositories and to work as I just said with with upstream project. Okay. And right now we are really struggling again. Since last week we find finally CVS, which is the official build tool for six in. In CentOS was open to CentOS 8, so we started doing proper proper builds for, for CentOS that will be the ones published in official repos. So that was open last week. So we are, as I talked, we are building packages there and trying to put to get everything bootstrapped there. I have I hope to have it to have it there very soon. And in parallel we are working with other six to get set, for example, or have advanced virtualization, which is the how the newest KDM is delivered to in CentOS 8, is what is called advanced virtualization. So we are working with several six to have all that. Especially, yeah, this is the full list of six where we have some kind of dependencies virtualization for KDM. We have storage for Ceph. Yeah, well, our cluster is not longer supported on OpenStack, I would say. Ops tool for quality and other things. And there are a couple of cases like messaging SIG and, and pass where we are still under discussions of who is taking care of what. And about CentOS Stream, this is 
so well, the topic that came from this morning. Uh, our initial idea, or our currently our approach, that we are going to keep building packages for number releases for CentOS 8. We, I think the user for for cloud sync packages, especially the ones targeting the official repos are operators and so on. We want to keep providing something stable and well known at this point. There is a lot of uncertainty yet on CentOS stream. So we, we are going to keep supporting CentOS 8 repos, menu releases and so on. But we really like the idea of the stream because it helped us in two of the main problems that we have been hitting in the last in the last years. The first one is being able to test minor releases before they, they are actually shipped in, in, in repos. In the past we used to have CR, but that was that kind of limited to those packages that are already released, so there is no, I mean, we cannot provide any feedback for that, that ship, that's going to land, okay, we can gain some time using CR, but that's it. And, and with CentOS Stream, I think is the right way to provide feedback when testing things before they are shipped. So our plan is to use CentOS Stream to run CR on top and to start testing how OpenStack works with what the incoming packages for CentOS Stream for minor releases. And probably the thing that is more exciting for us is being able to work with, with the next major release much, uh, much time before there is its seed by Red Hat in, as part of RHEL and it's in CentOS. Because it, well, I've explained all the mess we had to do with Fedora. I think this is the right way to do and to avoid all that hacking with Fedora and trying to emulate kind of what, how next rel is going to look like using Fedora. No, I think we think that CentOS stream is the right way to do it and we are really very excited about it in the sense that we hope that it will help us a lot to get ready for next major release when, when it comes. Okay? There is a blog post from, from, Alan, from Alan Bebek, another one of our colleagues also in, in RDO RAM, which kind of explain which is our position in, in CentOS Stream. Um, yeah, I think this is, this is the, the idea behind. We are going to keep packaging and providing repos for CentOS 8, and we plan, our idea would be to have a parallel development line testing, stuff, building and testing for, for Stream. Okay? And I think that's it about what has happened in the last in terms of RDO release. Uh, yeah, let's do uh, QA at the end yeah. together. Okay, so let's move on to the infra part. Thank you. So now we're going to discuss what we've been doing from the infra side of RDO during the last year. Um, so besides the, the amount of infra we borrow from the CentOS project, we use CBS, we use the Mibor infra, we use uh, CI.CentOS, we need to maintain a number of servers of our own because there's some other stuff that we have to do in RDO and, and the cloud So we have the, the web page and the mailing list, and we also have the whole RDO trunk infrastructure because uh, basically what we, we are running in RDO trunk is a tool called DeLorean that uh, goes every, after every project, upstream project that composes uh, RDO, and then whenever there's a new commit, it will go and build it. So that takes a lot of infrastructure. We need to maintain some servers and that this stuff. Also, since these uh, packages are going to be used by several projects during the OpenStack development cycle, we need to make sure that these packages are in a good shape. So we cannot just ship stuff and uh, break cola or break Tupelo and have them wait until we, we fix that. So we need to maintain what we call a, um, a promotion pipeline that takes care of checking that uh, the latest repositories that we are shipping are fine and then we kind of tap them. We, we, we'll see more on them uh, later. But the, all this infrastructure needs some, some additional servers. So we need to have a QCO2 image server, we need to have a container registry that is used as a temporary container registry storage. We need to have a log server. And then of course we need to maintain Gerrit and Sue because we use Gerrit to, to maintain all of our disk kits. And we also use, uh, use it as a third party CI system so we can, pro, uh, we can provide feedback on uh, an upstream project. Okay. And all of that of course need some test VM, so we need to have a, an OpenStack cloud somewhere where we can uh, st start our VMs, test stuff, and then provide feedback. 
So, so far, we were running all of our infra internally in, in a cloud called RDO Cloud. It was uh, managed internally by some Red Hat employees. It was based on RDO Okata, if I remember correctly. Uh, so the, the hardware was aging. Also, the team was, I mean, was having some trouble maintaining the, the infrastructure, and we decided to migrate to a new provider. So we now have a, our friendly cloud provider, Dexpost, who, uh, who is providing us uh, with, a, with a test cloud, and we, can, we are using that cloud to, to host our infra. We are still in the process of migrating, but uh, we decided to, to bite the bullet and, and go full DevOps. Because previously we had some Ansible roles, some playbooks, some puppet manifest, and we were using them to, to do configuration management. But actually, they were like, we were not using them in a fully automated way. We, were, we had them, we ran them from time to time, but we didn't run them automatically, or we didn't run them on a, on a crown, because we were always doing some manual stuff here and there, and that was preventing us from doing proper DevOps. So this time we decided to, to do it right. And now we have a repository called SFinfra. This is the URL if you want to, to pick around. And that repository will host all of the definitions for our infrastructure. Okay. And then we have set up this uh, workflow with using Zool. So whenever we have a commit and we're going to merge it, that commit will go uh, through Zool, a Zool job. We connect to a rich VM, which is the only VM where we should be able to connect to our infrastructure. So in theory, we are not allowed to connect directly to any of our servers. That bridge VM will run a set of Ansible playbooks, basically the playbooks in SF Infra, and then it will do two things. First, it will configure all of our cloud objects in the Dexbox cloud. That means that every VM, every volume, security group, whatever we need to create, they will be defined in the SF Infra repository and they will be applied automatically. And then we have a second playbook that will manage VMs. So any of the services you saw before, should be configured via playbooks in this uh, repository, and then will be applied automatically. Okay. So uh, the, per the first good thing about this is that we are, any change will go through change control, so we have to approve it in Gary. We have people ch checking that everything is going. Oops. I lost it. No. So. As I said, uh, every change will need to go through Gary. Someone will check it, and then we'll have Sul uh, making sure that everything is working as expected. And finally, it will be applied automatically. So, of course, this means that first, we should not do any manual changes in our repositories. And second, we have the ability to break stuff on an automated way. So this is something we really, really, really need to, to get right. So, um, the, the, main, the main issue with this is we need to have some tests and make sure that everything we, we merge is going to be working fine. Right? We don't do with this kind of uh, automatic propagation of errors. So we, is, we have started using Molecule for Ansible role testing. Uh, what we are doing is every Ansible role, not all of them, but most Ansible roles right now have uh, an associated Molecule testing. And uh, we, as part of a check job, when we submit, uh, change to Gary. We have an SF, we have a molecule uh, job that will check that all the all the roles are working as expected. Okay, so uh, this is an example of one of our runs. So we see that five of the roles are currently enabled to to use molecule. Not all of them are ready yet, which is a shame. But we'll work on that. And we are using Podman as a driver. We know. Docker is the default for uh, Molecule, but we wanted to, to start using Podman and see how it, how it works for us. And actually, it's working quite well. We, we're not having any, any real trouble. And we are getting used to, to using it, and for CentOS 8, it will be easy even for us. Um, there's one little detail when testing with Molecule that creates uh, issues for us. Uh, because if you check the So if you check the last one, this is a very simple rule. We have to, to enable a swap volume on our VMs. And of course, if you're running inside a container, there are certain operations you cannot do. And one of them is running swap on. Mm -hmm. So for this one, we have to do some, little, some small trick and, uh, and ignore one of the tasks in the, in the Ansible playbook. So it's not actually testing. We don't, we're not actually testing every single step. But uh, that one we are, we are excluding. 
So probably we'll have to, to look for improvement here and use VM, proper VMs for, uh, for some modules or things like that. We, this is something we still need to discuss. But so far it's, it's working quite well and we need to expand this to, expand this to, to cover all the Ansible roles. So, uh, we were speaking before previously about this uh, CI testing we need to do on our RDO trunk repositories when we, before shipping them and making them available to use for Triple O, Coda and all the other projects. So this is the way we were, we were setting up this promotion pipeline before. So we basically took all the latest packages we had built for all the OpenStack projects, with these 300 plus packages, put them in my repository, and then had a series of uh, triple oil based jobs that were testing the repository. And once, once all, all uh, CI jobs passed, then we say, okay, this, is, this repository is fine, we stamp it with a CI passed uh, stamp, and then we go out. Which is fine, it's simple, it's easy to understand, but there's one big issue with that. As soon as there is one issue in one of these 300 plus packages, <laughs> then we are halting the whole, the whole pipeline. So that means that, let's say everything is working fine, but there is a small bug in Cinder when running on top of Ceph with TLS, blah, blah, blah. And that is making one of the triple O jobs be go red. So that means that unless we fix that bug in Cinder, no new code is being pushed anywhere. So people running triple O cannot test new features. People running Cola cannot test new features. Other projects that want to rely on the latest packages from Mario Trunk cannot, uh, cannot do anything. So that, that was a problem. So we wanted to to make it a little bit uh, more dynamic. So what we did was something like this. We were working on a component-based promotions. Uh, what we did was take these 300 plus packages and split them into components. We have defined already uh, 15 different components. And we had like a Nova-based uh, component. So we have Nova and Friends. We have a Neutron component with Neutron and Friends. We have a Horizon component. So, of course, each component is much smaller. So, we divided the uh, test pipeline into two phases. So, first we have a component-based uh, phase where we take, let's say, the latest packages for component A and the packages we know that work, and then we take them through, the, through this smaller pipeline. So, for Cinder, we will be testing just Cinder stuff. Uh, for Neutron, we will be testing Neutron stuff, and so on. And once each of the components passes their own set of tests, they will get a first time. Let's say, okay, uh, I have passed my own tests and, and they're working fine. And then, once we get that, we will periodically get the latest uh, CI, uh, in first CI stamped uh, repositories and taken through an integration pipeline. And this integration pipeline will be like a full rehearsal. Okay, everything works fine. We are, we're sure that the latest code for everything, every single component is working correctly. And then those, those repositories that pass this second phase will get the double stamp and say, okay, these packages are fine, and now we can ship them in our new trunk and make them available for other, uh, for other projects to use. The biggest advantage we have with this uh, two-step pipe pipeline is that the cinder bug we mentioned before, let's say we have this small cinder bug, this cinder bug should be caught at the per component test pipeline. So this will be, so, okay, so there will be no new cinder code going to production, but if we have a previous version of the cinder code that was passing, then we can use that previous version of the cinder code, test it with the latest code over everything else, and if it works fine, okay, they're fine. Okay, we, we need to fix this bug in cinder, we will go back to the cinder guys, tell them, hey, this is, an issue, and we need to fix that. But at the same time, we are making uh, the rest of the code move forward, so we are integrating code faster, even if it's not complete. Okay, so, uh, so far, this has required changes in several of our components, in several of our components. No, that's not the right one. In several of our tools. Um, first, we needed to add support for the Lorem, our continuous packaging tool, to make sure that we, we were able to split the whole uh, repositories into components and, and deliver different repositories. Then we needed to create an initial proof of concept uh, jobs. The jobs were fine, they're working. And now we're in the middle of setting up the whole pipeline and making sure it works on time for Usuri, because we want to, to release this uh, for Usuri on CentOS 8. We don't have any plans to backport this stuff 
uh, to train for train and earlier we will be using the traditional pipeline which was working fine. Okay. So this is Modi. So you're probably just seeing okay this this was great. I want to really want to contribute to the cloud. See how can I do that? So there's several ways. We have uh, IOC channels. We have uh, CentOS development RDO on Freenode. We have mailing lists. We have weekly meetings uh, for the cloud SIGA for RDO meeting and uh, for RDO. So we will be more than happy to have you around if you want to contribute. And just one little thing before we finish. Uh, everything we talked so far was open stack because the, right now we are the only project inside the cloud SIG. But that doesn't mean that there is no place in the cloud SIG for other cloud projects. So if you are interested in uh, packaging and distributing uh, cloud stack, open nebula, any other cloud related project, even this Facebook container thing that uh, you mentioned, if you're interested in shipping it as part of the cloud SIG, you're more than welcome to do so. And we will be happy to share the stage with you on the next uh, CentOS you to to tell our story on our project integrity. So with that we are yeah, pretty well on time. So it's time for questions and answers. Um, if if there was a request for Usudi on CentOS 7 with Python 3 functionality, um, how like how possible is that? I, I would and, back. and repeat. <laughs> so <laughs> the question is, let's say someone requests uh, Python three based Usuri on CentOS seven. How easy or how feasible is that? I would push back as hard as I can. Okay, <laughs> but, but can you can you walk me through? Sorry. Yeah. yeah. The pro there is several problems with that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was just joking. So one of the problems is that the Python three stack in CentOS seven is not as complete as is for Python two. So we would have to have not only the usual dependencies stuff, but a lot of a, lot, a big, but another big set of packages that we need to reveal that we are usually getting from from Rent. Okay. So that's one of the problems. The other problem is all the rest of rebases or updates that are coming for, for CentOS 8, okay? Which is, in fact, it's a new different set, for example, of container tooling. Is everything is Podman based and so on. There is no, there is no Docker for CentOS 8 at all. Yeah. There is rebases of uh, things like, well, MariaDB, HAProxy, a lot of rebases and updates that are coming. So, to be honest, I think the likely Likely, likelihood to get it accepted would be low. I mean, it's it really would be would be hard. Okay. So possible, but highly unlikely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if there is just I mean, we we are open to discuss. Okay, and if there are justifications, could be done. I mean, there is uh, we have been having uh, support for CentOS seven, and well, in fact, we are still running CentOS seven jobs. So yeah, it's possible. It's untested, and in the other side, I think that to have support in RDO, we want to have those tested upstream also. So, getting things tested, both CentOS 7, CentOS 8, Python 2, Python 3. I mean, it's an effort not only in RDO, we need to have uh, also support of test upstream in Gate. So, I, and to be honest, uh, usually what users want in CentOS or is to move forward. So. There are usually more pressure to get train on CentOS 8 yeah. than Usuri on CentOS 7. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what we see in the community. We see much more people asking about moving on to CentOS 8 that I want to stay longer for, for on CentOS 7. There are companies, but there, I would say it's usually another profile of companies, maybe a lot more conservative and let's say another segment. <laughs> Okay. Well, just to add to that, um, what we did for six, if you remember, is uh, we provide some set of package uh, of, of basically on six when seven was the only supported release, but we backport only the core component for the hypervisor. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't be a rebuild of everything as well. So that would limit a lot of the dependency yeah. we need because we don't need, uh, I would say, uh, all the uh, also key and all these things, we just need to release a core component for hypervisor to be able to continue. So it's why it's an effort that is hard, 
I agree, but it's not completely crazy to think about it. Yeah. In terms of, of, of upgrading a big cloud. Yeah, in fact, that's that's very true. I mean, there there may be there may uh, there are some hybrid cases where it could make sense. For example, maintaining. Uh, hypervisor or CentOS 7, yeah, that could be an. In fact, that's one option that we will have with train. Not too sure, but yeah, it's it's yeah, that's a good point. So we still we still have four minutes. So. Yeah, more questions. Come on, I can't I can't even open. <laughs> Not mine. <laughs> you can offer three. Up to three, maximum. Yeah. So, five more.